Hey, what's going on everybody? Welcome to another high set math session. Today we're going to be going over factoring a perfect square. Uh, real quick. Okay, so first, can you figure out how to solve this? Look at these, think about it, process it. Do you know what to do? If you do, try it out. Let's see what you got. I'll give you about five seconds. If you don't know, then you know what? Let's move along. This is called something. This is something called the X method. No, not the X men, but the X method. All right. So this is used for trinomials. This is a, an equation with three terms. We are usually familiar with binomials, which we've done with one step and two step equations. Sometimes even trinomials, but this is where we factor how, with a perfect square. So what a perfect square is, you'll you'll understand. But for the x method, you're making an x and the number on top. You have to get by multiplying two numbers, and then those same two numbers have to add up to the bottom number. So to do this, these two numbers, nine and x would be multiplied times each other, all right? So we'll go into it right here. So nine, remember anything in front of x is multiplied by one. There's an invisible little one x, one in front of the x. So one times nine is nine. You'd put that in on the top of the, x, of the x for the x method. On the bottom, you just bring down the number in the middle, straight to the bottom. And then you have to find what factors of 9 on the top multiply to 9 and also add up to 6? So 1 times 9 does equal 9, but does 1 plus 9 equal 6? No. So the next factor of 9 is 3. 3 times 3 equals 9, and does 3 plus 3 equal 6? Yes. So 3 and 3 would go on the left and right. Once you figure that out, all you're doing is turning this into a binomial. You're bringing the positive 3's down, so it would be x plus 3 and x plus 3. And you set it equal to 0. And that's how you factor the equation. Very simple stuff. The only thing is sometimes you will see a negative number. So if it was um, like negative 9 and 0, 3 times negative 3 would equal negative 9, and then 3 minus 3 would be 0. And then... If it was x minus, it would be x minus 3. So if it's positive, it's a plus 3. If it's negative, it's minus 3. To take that a step further, we got to reference back the one-step and two-step equations that we would do, where we set numbers equal to 0 and just solve for x. That's all you're doing in these equations. You just do it twice since you have two of them. All right? Do it two, two times. Um, so x plus 3 equals 0. Subtract 3 on both sides to get x by itself x equals negative 3 for both equations so pretty simple not too not too tough um, but we are going to get a little get some practice going so I want you now that you know what the x method is and how to solve it remember the top number is factors that are multiplied to get the top and then the bottom number is adding them up so look at these six Practice and let's see if you can figure out how to do it. Pause the video now, by the way. Time to resume the video. So, check your answers. So, for the first one, 3 times 1 equals 3. 3 plus 1 is 4. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 plus 2 is 7. We went through the negative 9 problem, so 3 minus 3. Remember, if you do that, it'd be x plus 3 and x minus 3. Those would be your two factors. And then same for the bottom ones. Keep in mind that a negative times a positive equals a negative. If a number is multiplied against a negative, it's automatically tainted. The negative taints it. But if a negative is multiplying against a negative, it turns into positive. So in this instance, I guess two wrongs do make a right. Not that funny. Whatever. Keep going. Let's, let's go ahead and move ahead. I want you to try and solve this equation. Last practice set. 2x squared plus 4x plus 6. Solve for x by factoring. You're going to factor out the GCF. If you don't know what a GCF is, 
we look back at the video on reducing fractions. Next, you're going to use the X method. All right, so by solving this, you're factoring out a two. So it turns into two times X squared plus two X plus three. You're just turning it into a distributive property. Next, you would make the X and find three times one is three, put it up here, and then two, bring it down. We're gonna avoid the two right over here, all right? Cross it out, we're not worrying about that yet. Next, just bring it all down. So X two times X plus one times X plus two. Next, you distribute the two, so it turns into bigger equations. Two X, two X plus two, and then two X plus four, because two times X is two X, and then two times one is two, 2 times x here is 2x, and then 2 times 2 is 4. And then set the bo both of the equations equal to 0 and solve as normal. This is the end. We've reached the end, my friends. So um, you know how to use the x method. This only works for perfect squares. Uh, where you can use the X method where it makes sense sometimes it'll be like 10 and 4 and that doesn't really you can't really do that so for stuff like that you'd have to factor through a different method which we will learn at a later point so um, bear with me if you have any questions or concerns this video probably did go very fast but I'm trying to do shorter videos so if you have questions please let me know submit your work and thank you for watching have a great day